Good afternoon, good evening. Um, welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 542. And the topic today is part two of yesterday's talk, so I'll get to that in a moment. But the topic today is White Knight and Damsel in Distress, how to fix the fairy tale. And before I jump into that, I'll introduce myself so you know who I am. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And so that led to these talks almost two years ago called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And as I said, today is episode number 542. And this is part two from yesterday. So yesterday, just to give a recap, well, actually the title today again, just to reconfirm, is White Knight and Damsel in Distress, um, How to Fix the Fairy Tale. And the yesterday's talk was um, on the same theme, which basically was a White Knight and Damsel in Distress, a relationship doomed to fail. Um, so I thought I'd just switch it around and talk about the ways to fix and resolve both roles. Because if you're stuck in one of those former roles, either Damsel in Distress, sorry, uh, which one was doing, I guess, <laughs> White Knight or Damsel in Distress, because I don't remember which hand was doing which, then um, there are solutions to both. And by the way, this is a Facebook Live in case you're wondering if you're listening to this in some other format, you're only what we're talking about hands. Facebook Live first, then goes onto YouTube, then goes onto my podcast. So I'm giving you that framework. And I'll tell you at the end the links to that so you can get those different, find those ways in. So Facebook Live first and comments and questions are welcome during the broadcast, after the broadcast, etc. And I'll respond. So to solve the damsel, damsel in distress <laughs> or white knight syndromes or I won't say archetypes, but certainly personality challenges. Let me start with the White Knight one, because that's the one I went through myself. So this is very personal to me. As I said in yesterday's broadcast, I even had, back in 1986, I even had a Toyota Supra, a white one, with a license plate that was W-H-K-N-G-H-T, White Knight. Because uh, I was in a seminar where somebody called me that, and it stuck. So I know the, I didn't know at the time until later the pain that I was going to inflict on myself by embodying the white knight syndrome because I felt altruistic I felt kind compassionate caring and saving people with my you know knighthood as it were but I was actually really suffering from because I was actually finding myself in a um, perpetual saving mode and it was actually very tiring to be honest so and it actually and it also messed up my relationships um, in those relationships, just remember what I said before, if I need to reiterate stuff. In those relationships that I was in, particularly th there were particularly three that stand out. I was the nice guy, the white knight, being able to support my partner, and she was in her masculine, I was in my feminine. I didn't know that at the time. This is, look, this is hindsight. So there were very dynamic, strong women running the show, and I had a great relationship with them at, initially, but it, it became clear that it was upside down in terms of they were in the masculine, I was in the feminine. I was basically being a nice guy. The white knight, you know, I'm, I'm going to save everybody and be fine. And I sacrifice myself for the greater good, but I didn't stand up for myself. And what I didn't do at the time was no, I didn't know, first of all, that I had a role of a masculine embodiment to own and express. And secondly, I didn't do anything about it until afterwards. So what I've learned since then, because I've been on this path, this particular part of the path, this, this segment of the journey, for the last uh, 11 years now, I've gotten kind of clear what the masculine up-leveling, the resolution, the, the way to get out of the white knight predicament or any other predicament that's not fully expressed. Because the thing is, the white knight's one of many different um, archetypes. I use that term a lot, but I mean, it'll be true. But paradigms that men inhabit when they're not in their elevated, elevated awakened and expressive masculine. So if you're not, I can say this. The way I described yesterday is a, ma is a man who's in his masculine, really is a man who is embodying his leadership, his purpose, his clarity, his direction, and his service in a blended skill set, not the right word, but a blended expression that is authentic and aligned and really, really, really a value. So if you're not in that place, here's some keys. Before you get into another relationship, men, get clear about your why. And not only why you want to be in a relationship, because that's also important, but why you're on the planet. And to have that clarity, which 
can take some effort. I had to go through my journey myself. Is well, there's different stories. I mean, they talk about the hero's journey. They talk about the Dark Knight of the Soul. There's different terms for what can get you there. And I actually have some um, guide. Um, what do I want to call those things? Worksheets and guidance that can help you clarify that if you're looking to figure out what your own purpose is. But the thing is, once you know what your why is, your purpose, it gives you like a north star. Energetically speaking, you're focusing where you want to go. And men, when you have a north star, a direction that isn't your relationship partner, please then you can be a better partner. As backwards as it sounds, and I, I learned this lesson myself, is that truth be told for us as men, relationship with a woman, she comes second. Well, actually, I put it in third place, and I'll get to that in a second. I'll get to that in a moment, excuse me, a second, second. So, ladies, this is a good thing when a man doesn't put you first. Trust me, it's important. This is the, I didn't know this before, and it blew me away when I figured this out, or learned this back in 2007. It was a game changer for me, because the truth for myself was my position in life was I was here to serve women not so much in, in my business but in relationships so I didn't know that I had a better calling a deeper calling the truth is now that I, that's my calling as a work as a business in my coaching and speaking and being an entrepreneur that is focused in that arena with supporting women being their feminine I'm available to have a relationship that doesn't require that focus meaning that I can have a relationship that doesn't have to occupy the space that my purpose would we men, and I'm referring to Alison Armstrong's work primarily in this one, and David Data's work too, are linear beings more effectively in our masculine. We're directional, we get things done, we focus, we're good. So to get clear on our purpose first means that we start to embody and own it, which means it doesn't require a focus anymore. This is the thing. When we are, it's like um, the competence model. If, you know, you know, if, you, if you're not sure if you know these, skill, these uh, quadrant models, there's a bunch of quadrants out there. One of them is, the, is competence, which basically is there are four quadrants. And one of the first one you start with is unconscious incompetence, meaning you don't know what you don't know. So when you, you're doing something wrong, but you don't know you're doing it wrong, you don't know it's wrong. That's the unconscious competence. Then you have conscious incompetence, which is where you know you're doing something wrong, but you haven't fixed it. So, for example, I'm trying to think of an example for this. I'll come back to it in a second. So that's, that's two. The third module is conscious competence. You're making it better, you're fixing it, you're resolving it, but you're conscious of it. The fourth quadrant is where we want to get to, which is really mastery, is unconscious competence where you're doing it right without thinking about it. That's, that's the flow, of the, or the, however I drew that on the screen. <laughs> that's the flow. And so for purpose work, truly for us men, when we get to both conscious competence and then conscious, unconscious competence, that's mastery. And that's when we're living in a true calling. And that's the, that's the best place we can be to support having a healthy relationship. Now, if you're already in a relationship, you can still do this. It just may require quite to take some of your focus away from your partner to do this effectively. When you do that, it can change the relationship. And be warned, it can change it in one of different ways. But by following your heart and being in your truth, you elevate from the knight to the king in terms of evolutionary speaking as an archetype mold, model. At the same time, actually, you, you elevate from knight to prince, then to king, depending on this teaching model you follow. That's another topic I'll leave for another time. But it puts you in a place where relationships become easier. And I mentioned, by the way, that I put, say, put relationship third. The reason I say this is because someone who's been, I've been on, my, I've been on a spiritual path for 25, 30 years, actually more than 30 years now, woo, I'm still figuring it out. I'm not, I'm not a genius or a guru or any of that stuff, but I'm still a student. But what I get clearly is that my relationship to spirit, what I call spirit, whatever that is for you, be it God outside, inside, Jesus, or whatever you call that, by having a relationship with your spiritual bigness, for a better word, that comes first. Then your purpose, then your relationship. The reason this works, ladies, the reason this works for women, is because when you put your, when you have your focus of your, your spiritual relationship fulfilled, your relationship with your purpose fulfilled, you can have a relationship with a woman that is all about her. And women, I think, would like to hear that. That we men, when we have clarity about our why and what we're about, and what our relationship spirit is gives us freedom to be in a relationship that's healthier. And that's a paradigm shift for a lot of people. Now, I think you enough on the white knight thing. So let's see if we're resolving the damsel in distress. This is my work. This is my passion. This is my service. Ladies, for many women, they, you've been trained to think that you're less than anybody. Less than other women, less than, your, less than men, less than your parents, less than your brothers. Less than. And let me be clear. It's bullshit. 
<laughs> I'm just going to say that clearly. The biggest thing women have been told, which is a pack of lies, is that they're less than men. And it's not true. You're different than men, thankfully. But the power you bring as a woman, the gifts you have in your feminine, which you, when you tap into it, are magnificent, are game changers for the planet. And they change the culture and the society when you step into it. Unfortunately, most women have either been the damsel in distress or in another sub subset have moved into being the masculine women. Being feminist-like but not feminine, there's a difference. And the and truth is there are, there are two different labels for feminists nowadays. There's the feminists, which is the ones that are pro-women in the feminine, and there are feminists which are anti-men. And those ones generally are more masculine than the men are. And a lot of women have been trained to be masculine to succeed in the business world, as I've talked about before many times. But that role, or the damsel in distress, are both out of alignment with your true heart. The power of your ladies, the power you have in your feminine, is the power to move mountains. Don't forget that. I mean, I'm putting it simply and succinctly, but the truth is in my coaching with my clients, a lot of the time what my work is helping my, my, helping my clients do is to learn to love themselves again, and to honor themselves and to appreciate the power they have because the only reason you're not that powerful is because you've been told enough times that you start telling yourself that you don't have that power and that's not the real truth and frankly it's a shame that you were convinced of that so for the damsel in distress slash feminist type or masculine type woman the elevation into full feminine expression is a powerful transition into a place that is authority that is authenticity that is integrity we should say expressed by those, and it's a place that is in alignment with who you really are. It also sets the standard so high that a man cannot be in relationship with you unless he steps into fully, his fully awakened masculine. That's where the true um, elevated relationships can be, and that's what I love expressing, teaching, and seeing. I'm kind of biased. So, knight in shining armor, or the white knight, and the damsel in distress both have places they can go and grow from. And I hope this has given you some insights and some thoughts. If you want to find out more about how I can help you, especially ladies, I'll put links in the comments both for the self-love practice, because I mentioned about self-love is a foundational piece for getting back to your true self, and also links to my discovery session, because I'm, I'm doing some holiday specials for my coaching. It sounds so corny, but it's true. That's what I'm doing. Um, and hopefully it'll help you. If you want to find out more about the work I do, I check, check out my website. This stuff is part of my work. And again, this is this is part of my ongoing daily talks of messages to the masculine to inspire your feminine heart. This is episode number 542, every day for almost two years now. Um, replays, so you know where to find my work. So this is a Facebook Live, as I mentioned first, on my personal page that I input to my business page, which is Barry Selby, the author on Facebook. If you want to see it on YouTube, you can find them on my channel, which is Barry Selby. In fact, all my social media outside of that is, my, is Barry Selby. So LinkedIn, Pinterest, um, Twitter, etc. They're all, they're, they're all um, Barry Selby. That's the channel. Please subscribe to it. There's a playlist on there called Messages to the Masculine where these all reside. You can watch them in there in order from oldest, newest to oldest. And also you can find me or find me on my podcast, which is Messages to the Masculine, where I have all these in replay format in um, audio only. So you can download them there. You can also subscribe, please. And you can listen to them when you're driving, riding, exercising, whatever you're doing, where you don't have a chance to look at the screens. So you can listen to what I'm saying. There's a few there. Not all of them are there. They're going to be there eventually. But definitely Facebook and YouTube, you'll see most of my broadcasts. With that, I think I've given you enough information. Again, I'll put the links in the comments afterwards for you to find out more. And uh, your homework, your homework, because I mentioned this homework yesterday. I think this is really applicable today too, is if you're a woman, where are you, where are you, I was going to say sabotage, where are you playing smaller than you really should? Ah, uh, wrong word. It's not should. Excuse me. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> your homework, ladies, is if you are being playing damsel in distress, where can you reclaim yourself and own your true nature as a powerful woman? Because you may have some places you've forgotten yourself. If you're in your masculine too much, where can you soften into your feminine where you're more powerful? Soften does not mean weaker. It's more powerful. And men, if you are in the white knight syndrome or playing small or being an ego instead and not learning how to be a true calling, what is your purpose? Why are you here? What's your North Star? Ask some questions, start doing some work, and discover the power you have. So for men and women, you've got some homework. With that, I'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time, as usual. Take care of yourselves, and uh, I'll see you soon. Oh, just got a message. Amy, the stronger I am as a woman, it seems the less men listen. They see it as 
complaining instead of me being strong and honest. Well, actually, is that Amia? Amy, sorry, I'm not, Amy. Um, hmm. This is the thing. Complaining is a different energy than speaking up. So I would be curious to know what you say and the what you express and how you're saying it. Because if men are having an issue with you standing strong, that's their issue, not yours. So I would I would be willing to listen, find out what you're talking about, particularly because yes, you need to be stronger as a woman, but it's not a strength that is like pushing and pushing and pushing, because that's not feminine, that's masculine. When you're in a feminine it's more of you standing your your fullness is more powerful by exa by being it's not by pushing so if you're pushing on the men it might feel like complaining to them so when you're being strong it's a place of ownership of your space and who you're being which is way more powerful and irresistible are you defending yourself standing up for yourself not complaining well the thing is that's the thing you may be surprising the men who have never heard a woman do that before just to be clear it depends on the men I don't know who you're talking to but if you were really defending yourself because and standing up for yourself, then if it's not complaining, it's their perspective or their per perception. They don't understand a woman who stands up for herself, which is a problem for them, not for you. So if that's the case, keep doing what you're doing. So um, I appreciate your questions. I hope that is going to, yeah, yes, I, I hope that helps you because it is something that is a challenge for a lot of women nowadays is because being able to stand up for yourself in the world around other men who don't get that confuses the hell out of them because they're used to women being meek, meek and mild those you know um, uh, which was um, damsel in distress type things when you're not damsel in distress it confuses the hell out of them especially when you're not, when you're not being some sort of princess so you're welcome Amy um, if you have any questions and I'll put the links in the comments if you want to reach out for support let me know um, hope it's been, I'm glad it's been of help to you and anybody else who's watching I hope it's been helpful to you help for you too again questions comments in the comments after questions and thoughts in the comments afterwards I'll respond after I sign off I thank you for watching I will see you again tomorrow and uh, take care of yourselves